Hello and thank you for returning to my channel. In today's video, we'll do the mole concept and molar masses. In the previous video, I told you that scientists had decided on a special unit for atoms and molecules because they were very, very small in size. And this unit was called the atomic mass unit. But practically, we did not have any balance that could actually weigh anything in atomic mass units. We still had balances which could weigh only in grams, maybe up to the mm, fourth place of decimal. We could be that accurate, but we could never be as accurate as the atomic mass unit, which is uh, which is 10 to the power about minus 23 uh, parts of a gram. So, what was the solution that uh, scientists could have if they did, could not, even if we use a, an analytical balance in the lab, do you know that it weighs up to the fourth place of decimal of a gram and we had to close the doors of the chamber of the balance so that even a little disturbance and wind in wind can cause a change in the reading. Imagine what would happen if I just opened the door of the analytical balance chamber and I gently blew into it the entire balance would be disturbed so for practical purposes using a unit like amu was not possible so scientists decided on another unit which was called a mole and mole was now specific a unit which was specific to atoms and or subatomic or molecular quantities or microscopic quantities although it is a quantity that can be used to uh, for even large macroscopic objects but it was specially devised for microscopic uh, matter what is a mole defined as a mole is the amount of substance that contains as many particles or entities as there are atoms in exactly 12 grams or 0.012 kg of the carbon 12 isotope. Why did we choose carbon 12 again? If you remember, when we decided on the atomic mass unit, we took carbon 12 as a stable isotope of carbon. And that is why we had decided on carbon 12 to be our reference. And we said that one atomic mass unit would be equal to 1 upon 12th the mass of carbon 12 isotope, one atom of carbon 12 isotope. And therefore, we again took carbon 12 as our reference and we said that since AMUs is not possible, how many atoms would be present in 12 grams of carbon 12 isotope. If we took instead of AMUs, we took grams. Now this would be a much larger number of atoms. So we wanted to find out what would be, so what that was said to be one mole. So one mole of any substance is the amount of substance that contains as many particles as are there in 12 grams of carbon 12. This was called the mole. Now just imagine that like we have the seven wonders of the world uh, in science we have the seven the seven base units what are the base units meter for meter kilogram second ampere kelvin candela and the seventh one is mole just like the wonders of the world these are seven units which are the most important in science and mole found a place in the seven base units so you can imagine how important the mole or the mole concept was. As we study about the mole concept and we go further using it, you will understand how important this quantity was. The mass of a carbon-12 atom, if we calculate it by mass spectroscopy, it was calculated to be equal to 1.992648 into 10 to the power minus 23 grams. Therefore, if you have 12 grams of carbon-12, how would you calculate the number of atoms in carbon-12? We take 12 grams in one mole of carbon-12 and how many atoms does it have? So we divide it by the mass of one atom. If we divide it by the mass of one atom, we'll get how many atoms are there in 12 grams of carbon. When this was calculated, it was found this number comes to be equal to 6022 with 16 zeros. Those many, a gigantic number. 
and if you abbreviate it or write it in scientific notation it becomes 6.022136 into 10 to the power 23 atoms of carbon 12 would be present in exactly 12 grams of carbon this number was it makes one mole of not only carbon 12 but any substance because the definition of a mole is that it is that amount of substance of any substance which contains as many particles as are there as are atoms in 12 grams of carbon 12 which is equal to 6.022 into 10 to the power 23 atoms this number came to be known after a scientist Emilio Avogadro and it was called the Avogadro's number. Avogadro's number and since it is constant for one mole of any substance this is also known as the Avogadro's constant. Just as we have a dozen makes 12 pieces of anything a dozen bananas or we have a score which is equal to 20 similarly mole is also a quantity which implies to a specific number of substances or particles of a substance so Emilio Avogadro what is what is this number if you imagine how gigantic it is it is 602 hexillion atoms of carbon 12 make one mole 602 hexillion you can imagine how large the number is one mole of any substance always has the same number of particles which is equal to the Avogadro's constant. That is, I will not repeat this number again. I can just call it the Avogadro's number or Avogadro's constant. One mole of hydrogen molecules H2 would have Avogadro's number of molecules of H2. If you have one mole of water, this would have 6.022 into 10 to the power 23 molecules of water. If you have one mole of sodium chloride, sodium chloride is an ionic compound and I told you in the previous video that it does not have molecules, it has formula units. So sodium chloride has 6.022 into 10 to the power 23 formula units of sodium chloride, right? So this was about the mole concept and how this idea was decided on. And why is the mole so important? Why, you know, isn't it strange to have, I, it always occurred to me, why have a foot that is 12 inches? Why have a dozen that is 12 in number? Why not just have multiples of 10 like the, uh, you know, the decimal system? But the mole, the concept of mole and this Avogadro's number, the Avogadro's constant and such an abnormal number becomes very clear once you understand the relationship of the masses of the substances. It was found that if the atomic mass of a substance was 12, for example, carbon was 12, when we took 12 grams of that substance, it had this number of, this number of atoms. If we took whatever was the molar mass of a substance and we counted the number of molecules or atoms or particles or formula units of that substance, we always found that it had the mass, that is the atomic mass units, instead of the atomic mass units, it had the, had the same mass in grams. That was the beauty of this number or this quantity, the mole. So these masses are now called the molar masses. Let me just explain it. The mass of one mole of a substance in grams is called its molar mass. The mass of one mole of any substance is called its molar mass. And surprisingly, the molar mass is always equal to its atomic or molecular mass, which was given in atomic or molecular mass units to be equal to grams equal number of grams for example oxygen atom has a mass of 16 unified masses or atomic mass units if you take 16 grams that will be its molar mass that would be one mole and one mole of oxygen would be 16 grams and it would have 6.022 into 10 to the power 23 atoms of oxygen always similarly if you had one mole of oxygen molecules it would be 32 unified masses and this would be equal to 32 grams and it would have 6.022 into 10 to the power 23 molecules of oxygen. If you have water, 18 atomic mass units, 
instead of atomic mass units take 18 grams of water count the number of molecules it will be equal to 6.022 into 10 to the power 23 and what is that quantity it is one mole of water sodium chloride take formula units of sodium chloride 58.5 is the mass of one formula unit take it in grams 58.5 grams would have how many formula units of sodium chloride it would have 6.022 into 10 to the power 23 formula units of sodium chloride which is equal to one mole isn't it beautiful this relation made it clear why such a strange quantity was taken as a unit I really enjoy as you keep reading and studying further and using the mole concept the value of this unit would become clearer to you and you would understand why it deserved a position in the SI base units why it became one of the wonders of the scientific world thank you for watching keep returning for more bye bye